What's going on guys? This is Mars Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright, we're back at it once again. And you know, I don't have a fancy dancy title. Um, you know, I don't have a particular subject in mind this time around. But, you know, before we get started, I'd like to offer my thanks and show of appreciation to good old Ferris DKS and leftover pie you know this just so happened to be one of those nights where both of those guys were on and I was contacted and they're like hey dude let's have some good fights so seeing that both of them are primarily on the Xbox and also seeing that it is rare that all three of us are on at the same time I figured that I would drop everything that I was doing and go ahead and have some good fights so thanks to those guys now, if you guys are not familiar with Leftover Pie, um, as a matter of fact, he was showcased in the past in the Battle of the Build series. And this was around the time that I started to experiment with the dual wielding. Right, and I think he was the first one that I showcased on my channel as a dual wielder. So if you guys are not familiar, you can go ahead and check out that previous video. And Ferris DKS, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys may be familiar with him. He is a YouTube uploader that has awesome gameplay, right, and even better commentaries. Now, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with my own preferences, but, you know, it's good, you know, for everyone to show, you know, how they can take out gankers and all their fancy dancy moves, you know, the combinations and all that. But me personally, I really prefer commentaries. You know, I just like to sit and listen to other people's views and opinions and hear how they support their views and, you know, just to see how they express themselves. Even if those views are different than my own, I really enjoy commentaries, right? Especially when... Uh, and, and granted, some people are a little more experienced than others. But especially when you have a nice commentary, you know, it's not full of um, cussing. <laughs> you know, it's just a basically fireside commentary about whatever, you know, the particular uploader decides to talk about. Good thing in my personal opinion. So, what I'll do is, if you guys are not familiar, I'll go ahead and put a link to the Battle of the Build series that uh, Leftover and I had in the past, as well as um, a link to Ferris DKS's channel in the description box. And we also had a battle of the uploaders in the past, right? So, if you guys want to check that out, you can check that out as well. Now, now that we have gotten that out of the way, got some bad news I'm gonna be out of commission for a few weeks and here's why I crushed my left index finger at work <laughs> right total fracture of my left of my left index finger so for all of you guys that are familiar with the PS3 control I mean blocking and pairing I'm sucking right I have this big old splint on my left index finger and I can't do anything with it now you know I try to maneuver a little bit but just seriously playing totally out of commission and from what I've heard it's going to take a few weeks for um, that finger to be um, back to a one status so I'm probably going to be out of commission for a while so I know a couple guys kind of asked like hey dude let's have some fights and you know even if I fought, I was playing like crap because I'm, for the most part, handicapped without that finger. <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's kind of funny how you take um, these seemingly small body parts for granted until you get hurt. Right? And then you get a swift reminder of how each individual part makes the whole unit function well. Right? And in the absence of those parts, you can be in trouble. So enough about that. Now, um, what I do have in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of grave lording lately. Because, you know, like I've said in the past, with as long as I've had the game, every now and then I have to kind of go through these stages where I'm doing things different. Right? And this is why, you know, I really don't understand how people can just only duel. Like, how do you not get bored with that? 
or you know I don't understand how people can only do random invasions all the time or only do the same thing all the time I really don't see how people do it because I would definitely get bored and this is why I pretty much do everything right this is why I do uh, formal matches wherein I practice on my own tactics you know though it may be competitive I'm basically concentrating on getting better with tactics when I get tired of that I like to engage in a lot of random invasions I like the thrill I like the spontaneity and I like the excitement when I get tired of both of those I like to do a lot of themed fights or themed invasions right may it be to add a little challenge to my own gameplay style by you know doing a uh, NPC invasions right and um, stand in line with those limitations because you know what I'm sorry you guys really want to ch challenge yourself try to play as an NPC <laughs> right and try to play it as close to the actual NPC as you can you guys will notice that it is really hard I know when I did that uh, Homeland volume 3 you know I oftentimes I get people who will ask like hey dude you know what was your favorite or least favorite character to play and you know out of all of the NPCs that I've tried to play I would say the hardest is probably um, Oswald right because Oswald has zero poise no means to block I mean a miracle that basically sucks especially when you don't have a shield right because if you don't have a shield I mean you know you could die actually before you get the explosion from that miracle so I mean Oswald trying to play that build pretty much sucked and there's a few others that suck so you know th that that's just going all to say that you know if you guys want to challenge go ahead and try to do some of that but back to the point but what I've been doing lately is grave lording right shout out to a lot of those guys that caught me over in the depths so what I did was I created three builds and I took them all to new game or oh, actually to new game plus because and actually um, shout out to ribesome one if you guys ever want to know the ins and outs of the grave lord covenant please check out his channel and as a matter of fact i'll send a link to his channel in the description box that guy has got like the bible of grave lord covenant knowledge right he's got it all put together he really invested a lot of time and energy into sharing with the community everything that he knows with regard to the grave lord covenant so what i decided to do i said you know what i'm going to go ahead and create uh several profiles and dedicate those to the grave lord covenant so in addition to this video i actually had some um you know some recordings that I really need to go through edit render and all that and prepare for upload um, while my finger is healing right because I'm basically going to be out of commission and even if you guys do see me online I mean more than likely I'm going to get my behind kick because I am pretty much handicapped so enough about that now this was a good series of fights and like I said before it wasn't a formal thing just so happened that those guys uh, were online at the same time that I was right and when they contacted me I'm like holy crap they're both on so seeing that uh, those guys are primarily on Xbox it was definitely a treat for me to be able to catch both of them at the time that I did now this series of fights taught me a lot especially when fighting against good old leftover pie right and this is yet another reason why I prefer to play against people who concentrate more so on strategies you know and tactics as opposed to you know just trying to be the most OP person that you can because you know with as long as I've played the game whenever I play you know whenever I fight against players like this I am always learning something one thing that I learned is that I suck with regard to my stamina management this guy punished me so many times for running out of stamina that it was ridiculous you know you guys are gonna notice because actually there's two parts right and when I say two parts I'm not necessarily talking about two particular vi two individual videos but there are two segments one wherein we're in the MLB 
and then a little later on we decided to change locations because you know this night that we were fighting it was it was pretty busy so you know all three of us we're just kind of like hey dude let's just kind of change locations so we end up moving over um, near the daughter of chaos so like I was saying he really taught me right um, in these fights that I suck at stamina management and I know so many of us rely so heavily on those green blossoms but even with the green bo blossoms you know there was times where you know I still had the stamina regen fired up and I was still running out of stamina and with the way that he was playing with his dual wielding right because there will be times where he'll just go uh, rape your s -doc. you know rape your s -doc broadsword and he was so good with switching weapons and hitting me with the combos. Because think about it. Even if I ran out of stamina and he was just, you know, trying to stagger me like most people do. You could just toggle out of that. And I would have been, you know, I would have been good to go. But seeing that he wasn't using any of those, you know, poise breaking weapons. He was able to get like, in some cases, four or five hits in. That eventually would have added up to like upwards of 600 damage right because that's what happened once you ran out of stamina right because once you're out and especially if you run out in the middle of a swing I mean there's like a few seconds that you can't block you can't dodge you can't roll you can't do anything and like I said before had he been using one of those uh, poise breaking weapons I mean it wouldn't have taught me anything because I mean once he tried to break my poise I just would have toggled out of it but seeing that he was using a lot of um, weapons that didn't necessarily break a lot of poise, you guys, and, and I think you guys are going to start seeing it. Case in point, right now I think he's using like a rapier, a uh, S-Doc, a broadsword, and something else. And you guys are going to notice he is going to punish me big time. All right, so he definitely, you guys notice those combinations? He's, you see, he's just running, coming straight at me with everything. So that really taught me a lot. You know, it taught me that, you know what, dude, you probably need to space out um, your running and all of that because you are getting killed with those combinations. Another thing, um, just by watching his own play style, caused me to experiment with different sec offhand weapons other than, you know, the standard Falcon, Scimitar, or Painting Guardian Sword. Right, because I mean, in most cases, whenever I may have an offhand weapon, that's really what it is. But just watching how he was getting these combinations in with, you know, a rapier, a S dog broadsword, and whatnot, it was actually fun to look at. It was, and it was pretty effective. I mean, and I was feeling how effective it was because he was stomping the crap out of me with it. And you know, that's just yet another testament, like I've said in the past, to my preference. Um, to playing against players who focus more so on tactics than winning. Now, granted, I'm pretty sure Leftover wanted to win. <laughs> of course he wanted to win. Who doesn't want to win? I want to win. Right? But he still focused more so on tactics, which is why whenever I lose to people like him, you know, case in point, whenever I lost, uh, you know, and here's another one. Uh, Ferris DKS, you guys want to notice in our uh, battle of the uploaders in the past. Every single time I lost to that guy, I just flat out felt outplayed. I didn't feel out BS'd. I didn't feel like I was out rare tear stoned, right? I didn't feel like I was out Leo ringed. And keep in mind, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those. I'm just saying that at the time, in, in other words, when I lost, there was nothing to complain about. Right now, I don't know. Um, how much some of you guys may say, oh, you know, all is fair. We all complain. Pretty, I'm pretty sure when we lose. And sometimes, you know, some of those complaints are more valid than others. Case in point, let's just say you lost to a guy that BS'd you twice. Well, it's easy to, you know, after losing and being somewhat sour about it, it's easy to blame your loss on, well, he won because he just BS'd me twice. It's easy to do that. But think about it. What can you, you know, or, you know, it's kind of easy to, you know, you're fighting against someone and they just pull out their little high-speed clutch move red tearstone ring. And let's just say they beat you. 
Well, you can easily attribute that loss to, well, it wasn't necessarily him, but it was the benefit that came with the ring. It's easy to do that. Or, you know, as a last example, let's just say you're fighting against a guy with a buff. You know, if you lose, it's just so easy to say, well, I mean, you know, yeah, he beat me, but he needed a buff to do it. But see, when I play against guys like Ferris, Exhale, the Mad X Brothers, I mean, um, you know, Spike, War Souls, and a host of other guys, I just flat out feel outplayed. And those are the type of players that I really like to play against because they teach me things about my own self, right? They teach me, uh, you know, about my weaknesses and they help me to kind of focus on some of my strengths and things that I should probably do better, right? Because these guys are not BS competitors, they just try to outplay you flat out. And here's, here's another example. Now, this particular fight, admittedly, I got sour. <laughs> right? And it wasn't because of anything that he did wrong. But there was just some hits that I was missing that I just could not, you know, understand why I was not connecting. Right? But hey, all you could do is say GG Dark Souls. Case in point. Okay, right there. Just like right there. Now, I do know that if he would have flipped while I was attacking, okay, I'm good with that. But it looked like that my weapon hit the ground even before he flipped. But it still missed. And even at the end of this fight, like I swing right at right. Th well, where is it? There's a swing right over here that it looks like to me I should have connected, but I didn't. Right, so this one fight I did get kind of sour at. I mean, not at him, but I was just kind of thinking to myself, like, come on, dude, that was 100% BS. But all the other fights, I just flat out felt outplayed. No complaints, no crying, no sodium added to the diet. Nothing but GG. So, you know, I definitely had a good series of fights between good old Leftover Pie and Ferris DKS. I love fighting against guys, you know. Not only these two, but other guys that um, concentrate on tactics. You know, another guy I'll say is, um, what's that guy? I think his name is like uh, Lagstab or something like that. That guy is pretty good. Now, I know sometimes once I give a shout out to some people, I'll get somebody in a comment who will say, Oh, that guy's a tryhard. He, he, you know, that guy, he, uh, he chain stabbed me three times. Listen, we all have two sides to us. You know what I'm saying? We have a dual side and we have a random invasion side. Right? All I can do is speak about my own personal experiences. You know, Lagstab is another one. That guy is so good with those toggle punishes. You know, it's just kind of amazing. Uh, another one is Artorius88. Now, granted, some of these guys that I'm giving shout outs to, they may not necessarily be, you know, the so called known as top tier in Dark Souls, but I'm just talking about guys that, you know, I would, that I kind of play often. And um, not only do I play often, but I do so because I enjoy their play style. You know, Bruno Skate, he's another one, um, Artorius88, and a host of others. Those are basically the circle of guys that I play with pretty frequently because I know that I always have good fights. And I know that although I will get BS'd when I deserve one, I won't feel like I was basically BS'd to death. Right? I know those guys are concentrating on tactics just like myself. So, enough with the shouts out to uh, some of the people that I freak. Oh, here's another one, Oxy. I mean, there's so many. Right, so this is not really a shout out session to everybody. I'm just basically uh, pointing out that I really like playing against guys that concentrate on tactics. Right, because one belief that I have always had is that BS's should be a part of your strategy and not the focus of your strategy. And there's a big difference when you you when you basically focus on bs's as a as a strategy you will basically just hunt for them all the time but when you just use it as an overall part of your repertoire i mean you take advantage when you when you can but you don't necessarily need it to win because you are so proficient 
and a lot of the other tactics that I mean it just become a part of your own play style but it doesn't depend on your play style all right so enough ranting about that so he tied me up pretty good with that heavy build right and actually he punished me big time with that because there was a few times that my stamina was running out and if you notice he was charging at me with that um what is that weapon called whatever the weapon is the name kind of um slips my mind right now but i'm pretty sure you guys know what i'm talking about but anyway so you guys are going to notice he is so good with these combinations dual rapiers long sword bastard sword and he's even pulling out the avalanche and actually, I don't even know why I tried to thrust twice with that halberd. I should have known he was going to come back with that uh, parry. But it is what it is. You guys notice that? He is coming at me with those combos and just chopping off my vitality. And actually, I got stuck on the geography right there. If you guys notice, I tried to punish him for the BS, but I couldn't go uphill. And I think a little later on, I end up swinging to one side and I have to turn around to the total opposite side because I wasn't able to engage him. All right, so enough about that. Oh, here it is, right here. And I learned my lesson the first time about that geography, so I had to go uh, to his left-hand side, right? Because the side that I originally approached from, I couldn't, I just couldn't beat that incline. All right, so we're back at it. So it looks like this time around, he's using the composite bow, long sword, and the pike. Okay, so we're good to go popping off with and you know what some people and you know that's one of the uh, that's one of the things about uh, low damaging weapons you know a lot of times when people play a game they kind of go for uh, weapons that can inflict the most damage right actually that can inflict the most damage and seems to be the most efficient Right. But little do a lot of people realize is there are a lot of weapons that may not necessarily hit as hard, but because they are so fast, they are able to hit several times in the amount that it may take for some of the slower weapons to hit once. Case in point, uh, if you guys would notice, good old Leftover, he uses a lot of S-Doc and rapier combinations you know i've even seen them like with a rapier s dock broad or long sword now granted these weapons do not hit hard by themselves right but when you notice some of the combinations he's able to put together in some cases he can inflict more damage than what a one hit claymore can do right and that just brings me to you know a lot of times i'll notice someone you know, maybe using a tactic or a certain weapon combination that I probably never would have put together, right? And a lot of times, you know, you'll notice someone successful with it and you say, holy crap, I didn't really realize that, that particular tactic or weapon was viable, right? And case in point, with the S-Doc, I never really messed around with the S-Doc. Now, there's been times where I kind of experimented with it with my Leo Ring build, but seriously, just... You know, PvPing it up with an S stock? Not really. I mean, at most, I was just messing around with the rapier, right? Because I really like the uh, the critical modifier that comes with the rapier that the S stock does not have. Now, keep in mind, you know, there is a hidden modifier because if you notice, if you get a critical with any type of rapier, it's going to inflict a lot of damage. Now, it won't be as high as um, a standard rapier or even a dark silver tracer, but it will inflict a lot of damage. Right, so I don't know if it's, you know, just something within the pierce weapon class or what, but I just know that that's one of the benefits to the rapier class. All right, so uh, like I said before, um, this was a good series of matches, mostly with leftover pie, even though I did have an opportunity to get a few matches in with Ferris. You know, he uh, kind of took a uh, either a snack break, dinner break, or something like that at the time, so that's why uh, you didn't see more matches with good old Ferris. But hey, it was a good set all the while. And like I said before, I'm going to go ahead in the event that you guys... Um, 
did not get a chance to catch the first time Leftover and I had a series of matches. I'll go ahead and put a link to that particular fight in the description box, as well as the battle of the uploaders with myself and Ferris in the event that you guys didn't see it, in addition to a link to his channel in the description box. And like I said before, if you guys enjoy good commentaries, please go ahead and check out Ferris's channel. Right, because like I said, um, granted, it's good to watch someone with their little tricks, you know, their reverse rolls and taking out gankers and, you know, a few OP moves and combinations. But at the same time, my personal preference is just to sit back and listen to some good commentary. Um, and actually, when you couple that with awesome gameplay, I mean, you just you're just good to go for the most part. So I'm really hoping that a lot of these guys who are here now will stick around for uh, Dark Souls 2. Now, you know, I don't know what direction everybody else is going to take, but, you know, I've kind of mentioned in the past that it's really my intent to not dive head in first once Dark Souls 2 is released because I think everyone should be afforded uh, a reasonable amount of time to experience the game for themselves. Now, I know a lot of these guys that are kind of new into uploading, you know, they know that Dark Souls 2 is going to be a popular game. And because the focus is more so on growing a channel as opposed to um, perhaps, uh, I don't really know how to word it. But since I know that, I, I'll just put it this way. Since I know a lot of people are going to be focused on, you know, creating uh, a larger audience on their channel, I know a lot of people are going to dive head first into Dark Souls 2 commentaries. Me, on the other hand, you know, it's not necessarily about the subs, the followings, and all that nonsense. It's mostly about my love for the game, which is why I don't really want to start coming out and you know start doing showcases once Dark Souls 2 is released because I really don't want to cheat anyone out of a good initial experience with Dark Souls 2 because you know anyone like I said before anyone can kinda of just look at YouTube videos or check out a strategy guide and get all the tips and tricks but you're really cheating yourself out of a great experience Right, so that's one of the reasons why it is not really my intent to start off with, you know, walkthroughs and all that once the game is initially released. Now, granted, after the guy after the game has been out for a few weeks, maybe a month or two, I'll go ahead with the walkthroughs. But one thing I will definitely do from the beginning is invasions. I will definitely do invasions because, like I said before, my channel is directed at PvP. So whereas I won't be walking through the game. I will continue to focus on invasions, and I'll probably do that from the very beginning. So, I'll be gearing up between now and then. I'm going to be getting a new desktop uh, so that I can be able to stream. Because whereas I might not necessarily start diving headfirst with the YouTube videos, I will definitely be streaming so we can all experience Dark Souls 2 together. All right, so that's about it so once again thanks both guys for this awesome opportunity it was fun i enjoyed myself like always in addition to the learning lessons right with experimenting with more offhand weapons <laughs> right than just a falcon painting garden sword and scimitar uh in addition to that uh like i said before learning a good lesson about uh, stamina regeneration and being more disciplined and focused on that because I really learned a lot about that in this series that my stamina uh, management is rather poor all right so until then I hope you guys enjoy the video until next time Martyr's Brigade is